Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by Omen's new wireless range of mice, keyboards and headsets. SSDs, solid state storage, instant access to any piece of data on a mass storage device and blisteringly fast transfer speeds accelerated by a state-of-the-art PCI Express 4.0 NVMe interface. This, my friends, is one of the foundations of the next generation console experience. Of that, there is no doubt. PlayStation 5 has it, Xbox Series consoles have it, and PC, well, if it's not essential now, which I believe it is, it soon will be. Now, which makes a lot of what you're about to see in this video somewhat surprising, perhaps. SSD is obviously important, but they're just one part of the magical next-gen console recipe. Equally important is the truly generational leap in CPU performance and I suspect the low-level APIs for truly accelerating what an SSD can deliver. So yes, I'm back testing Xbox Series X backwards compatibility, but this time with a very different spin. Now, we've already looked at performance on existing backwards compatibility titles, and suffice to say, we saw some amazing things. I mean, without giving too much away, there's still more I want to share there. But this is a performance test of another sort, something a bit more practical. So in the first look at Series X, I did some loading time tests and the results were, well, in a lot of cases, exactly like this Final Fantasy XV comparison you're seeing here. The Xbox One X is currently the fastest home console money can buy, but in both performance and loading time tests, Series X wipes the floor with it. In that video, I also said that it may well be the case that storing back compact games on the internal SSD may not be the best idea, and that your library may uh, sit better on a standard SATA SSD hooked up via USB. And that's where we're going with this video, and it's a doozy. The more I dug, the more fascinating the results were, and some perhaps not what you were expecting. So before we go on, I'm going to stress one thing, and I really do hope it sinks in. Back compat titles on Xbox Series consoles do not use the velocity architecture. They do not benefit from direct storage and the low-level APIs Microsoft has created for the system. In effect then, the SSD acts like well, an SSD, how an SSD acts on PC, to be more precise. And to be clear, Mark Cerny has said the same thing about backwards compatibility on PS5 too. You're not going to be seeing the full force of the SSD benefits uh, running old PS4 games. First up though, a mystery. In a slightly embargo-breaking manoeuvre, IGN revealed that Xbox Series X's internal SSD gives 802 gigabytes of usable space to the user. There's been plenty of discussion about that, advertised storage space versus actual usable gigabytes available for your games. 802 gigabytes. But here's where things get curious. Check out the Xbox One X's usable storage. It's actually lower at 781 gigabytes, something I've checked over three different units now. So not only does Series X give you more space, it's doing it with the quick resume cache, which offers space for around four Series X titles. My guess, Series X has hardware decompression engines that One X doesn't have, so why not use them to give more SSD space to the user? On to the testing then, and here are the devices I'm using. First of all, a five terabyte Seagate passport style hard drive, 5,400 RPM here, Par for the course. It's the kind of drive you buy for portability and mass storage, but not for performance. So it's kind of similar to the internal Xbox One X drive. However, it doesn't have to handle OS functions simultaneously. And by that token, it should marginally outperform uh, the drive that's within the console. Next up, our old friend, the 8TB Samsung 870 QVO, we recently tested with PS4 Pro. I connected this up to the Series X with a Sabrent SATA to USB 3.1 adapter, which I found to be the fastest in my collection. You're not getting the full speed of the drive, but something close to it. Next up, an off-the-shelf NVMe contender, a 512GB Samsung PM961. Now to be clear, it's not the fastest NVMe drive on the market, but it will read at 2GB per second and it will write at 1.5. And this is comfortably ahead of the limits of the USB interface. And to facilitate that interface, 
I'm using the rather splendid Asus Strix Arion enclosure, a heavy metal case that acts as a heatsink here and throws in some bonus RGB lighting into the bargain. So let's start by looking at the most basic of practical tests for the backwards compatible library, moving data about. My install of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 currently occupies a hilarious 172.2 gigabytes of space on my internal SSD. So first of all, let's see how long it takes to copy that data away from the internal drive and onto each of our contenders. Not surprisingly, perhaps, the Samsung PM961 in the ASUS enclosure finishes off the task first in 11 minutes 6 seconds. Write speeds on our SATA interface aren't so strong, so it takes the 2.5-inch Samsung 870 QVO drive 17 and a half minutes to do the same job. So yeah, it could be the limits of the USB interface there, or it could just simply be the fact that the 870 QVO is slower than the NVMe drive in doing the same job. Meanwhile, let's pity the mechanical hard drive here, which blows long and hard on the sad trombone with a 34 and a half minute transfer time. Now I noted that some components of the install transferred at different rates to others, which is interesting, but regardless, what we're seeing here basically is the raw write speeds of the drives, and it falls into exactly the order I would expect. So that's a fairly decent demonstration of copying games away from the internal drive. But how about putting them back via each of our test devices? Reading is perhaps more important than writing, as your games won't be doing much writing to the storage device. And here's where things equalize a bit. 8 minutes 26 to read 172.2 gigabytes from the NVMe external SSD and to write it back onto the system device. But the SATA SSD is just 11 seconds longer than that. The mechanical drive also reads faster than it writes. But man, 21 minutes and 24 seconds is best described as sloth-like by comparison. So with our storage devices tested in terms of their basic read and write speeds, a clear pecking order is present. But once we move into actual game loading time tests, things get a little more interesting. And a genuine question has to be asked, to what extent should you use your internal SSD on Series X to run back compat titles? I would contend that based on my results, an external SSD is by far the best solution when things like speed versus price are stacked up. Let's go back to Final Fantasy XV, the scene of Xbox One X's Smackdown in our first video. Here I'm not using the 1080p light mode though, I went for the heaviest GPU option with the thought that maybe, perhaps, we'll be loading in higher quality textures. Perhaps not, but still, here's how my first load went. 15.7 seconds for the internal drive versus 16.9 seconds on the Samsung SATA drive and 17.3 on the external NVMe setup. So revelation number one, load times can vary from run to run, but in this specific example, the SATA drive is minutely faster than the USB NVMe drive. The second revelation, Despite being directly hooked into the system at the PCB level, the Microsoft internal SSD is only 1.2 seconds faster than the closest USB equivalent. And yeah, at 52 seconds, the mechanical hard drive gets a hard pass. There are superior options available, clearly. So is all of this an outlier then? Nope. Let's try the next save from John Linneman's collection, and this time the NVMe external drive is marginally faster than the SATA, but the internal drive still has a 1.2 second advantage. The mechanical drive isn't too bad on this save actually, completing just 6.8 seconds behind the internal drive. The next save basically sees a similar differential between all the tested storage devices, only this time the SATA drive produced an identical load time to the internal SSD. Now remember that load times do vary a touch from run to run, but the bottom line is that I really don't think you'd be able to tell the difference in a real life scenario between any of the SSD based solutions here. But hang on a minute. Back in my original back compat video, I showed a gigantic advantage loading on Series X versus the Xbox One X's internal drive, which is mechanical in nature. 
So what if we take the NVMe drive in the ASUS USB enclosure and run that on Xbox One X? Going back to the first save then, that was 17.3 seconds on the NVMe drive on Series X, and running that same drive on One X, the load time is a colossal 1 minute 12.8 seconds. So how? Why? Well, chances are that the Series X has a more efficient USB interface, but far more of a contributing factor is the fact that the old Jaguar CPUs in the current gen machines are just really bad by today's standards. Loading isn't just about storage speeds, it's about extracting compressed data, and the Zen 2 cores in Series X are just a ton better at decompression than Jaguar. So yeah, while the SSD is getting a lot of the credit for the loading time improvement, I'd actually say that in many cases, it's the CPU that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Let's look at the rise of the Tomb Raider next. The initial load, first of all. Interesting this because Xbox Series X actually kicked off to begin with by loading this up from Quick Resume, which eliminates a lot of the need for actually testing initial loads. But I could purge the Quick Resume cache simply by exiting the application and then rebooting from scratch there. It pretty much acts as it would if Quick Resume was not involved at all. So yeah, interesting results here. I actually saw no real difference booting this one from any of the SSDs, either internal or external. You essentially halve the time taken to load Rise of the Tomb Raider when compared to the same exercise being carried out on a mechanical hard drive. So look, I can go through the various level loading tests here, and it's basically the same picture throughout. The SSDs group together, the mechanical hard drive lags behind to varying amounts, but something quite curious happens when we do the USB NVMe comparison between Series X and One X. Initially, it's business as usual. The same storage still sees Series X pull significantly ahead of One X. But in this case, loading up the geothermal valley, the One X, well, it's actually quite a bit faster than usual. So I'd suspect that what's happening here is that this is a raw storage test. So yeah, your gains over One X will vary depending on the title and depending on the data that's being streamed. Borderlands 3 next, and we'll kick off with the initial load since it is, how can I put it, rather lengthy. Not entirely sure what's going on here, <laughs> but even the SSDs require 54 to 55 seconds from boot to actual user input. Amazing. Uh, so you still save around 19 to 20 seconds compared to using a mechanical drive, but still, it's not great. Not great until you compare to Xbox One X though, running from the same external NVMe drive I used on Series X, where this Herculean loading exercise actually gives you adequate time for a toilet break, requiring 2 minutes and 21 seconds to complete. Amazing, or rather not amazing. Actually loading a game though, comparatively painless even for the mechanical drive. So we definitely seem to be taking most of the pain on that initial load. Borderlands 3, also interesting in that we're getting a look at streaming efficiency here as soon as our save loads in. So yeah, it takes some time for all of the textures to fully resolve. Let's slow all of that footage down and look at each of our contenders in turn. Different textures resolve to full quality at different times, but in this case at least the internal drive looks to be on level pegging with the external SATA drive with the NVMe unit just a few frames behind, which is curious. The mechanical hard drive though, clearly it has the most lag. So look, I did a bunch more tests on storage heavy games like Fallout 4 for example, but the end result is pretty much always the same. Whatever the SSD you use on Xbox Series X, whether it's the internal one, a decent SATA one running over USB, or indeed an NVMe drive on USB, for game use there's a delta of nothing to around 2 seconds between them. So the obvious takeaway is to grab the most cost efficient SSD you can and ensure you have a really good SATA to USB bridge. The Sabran one I picked up here, I've linked to it in the video description below, it's actually pretty cheap and it's plenty fast. And I do think that getting the right bridge is important. So I initially did a bunch of tests using this no-name adapter I brought a while back from Amazon. So here's the differential using that adapter compared to the Sabran one with the same Samsung 870 QVO drive. It actually adds almost 2.5 seconds to the load times of Rise of the Tomb Raider. And yeah, remember that colossal load with Borderlands 3? With the cheapo SATA adapter, it's around 18 seconds slower than the Sabran one. 
I think in cases where it's the CPU doing a lot of the heavy lifting, there's probably not much difference. So in this Final Fantasy 15 save, barely any difference at all between the two adapters. That said though, it is a pretty short loading time anyway. Of course, I'm testing a loose 2.5 inch SATA drive here, and you may well be tempted to get a fully integrated drive, one that gives you the SSD and the USB enclosure all in one. I just ensure that it's rated for full bandwidth on USB 3.1 or 3.2, because I suspect that's the main difference here between my two SATA to USB bridge cables. So there we go. You can rest easy. The SSD's use of backwards compatibility is indeed very PC-like in nature. You're getting a raw speed up in loading times, which is great, but it's not actually that much faster than a decent SATA drive with a quality USB bridge adapter. You may be tempted to go all out with an NVMe drive, but it looks to me that your actual wins here in practical gaming terms are limited. It looks like you could copy faster from your internal drive to your external NVMe SSD, but that's kind of about it. Write times are an improvement, but in-game, once you factor in margin of error, it's difficult to see much of any advantage in spending the extra money there. Just let me stress one more time though, the internal SSD under back compat effectively acts as it would in a PC. It's an accelerant, but it's not using the velocity architecture technologies, the low level access that really gets the most out of the SSD. We're gonna need to look at actual Series X titles to get the measure of that, assuming that the titles are actually using it, of course. But in the here and now, I think that uh, the back compat tests here, pretty compelling. For a start, it really does highlight how excellent the Zen 2 CPUs are in the next generation machines. In my last video, I looked to quantify uh, the CPU and GPU advantage in gaming over 1X, and I just couldn't do so on the CPU side. But here, in loading times, the brute force decompression prowess of the CPU shines through with often dramatic results. Yeah, so look at the result you're seeing here, the same USB drive on Series X and 1X. The only differentiating factor beyond the CPU will be the USB bus. It's pretty compelling. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for making it to the end of this one, if indeed you did. And look, by the time you're watching this, we should have crossed the 1 million subscriber threshold. It's been a really long old road to get there. Hasn't always been easy, and I'd just like to thank you all with a special side order of extra thanks for our Patreon supporters. Yes, if you really love what we do and want to support the team more directly, please consider our Patreon. You'll have access to pristine quality video downloads of absolutely everything we do. But that's it. That's the video. More to come on Xbox Series X soon, so watch out for that. But from me for now, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry. Featuring its new warp wireless technology, Omen's PC peripherals allow for lag-free gaming. From the 360-degree audio of its Omen frequency headphones, the 180-hour battery life of the Vector Mouse, and the 2.4 GHz connection of its Spacer keyboard, Omen has you covered for the ultimate wireless experience.